I've been using rubbing alcohol <sighs> to clean Pilot Metropolitan's fine and medium nibs when stuff's been dried in there and as an intermediate rinse or short soak when I realized water wasn't getting everything out. I had assured it would be safer than ammonia. I, oh, sorry, I had assumed it would be safer than ammonia or bleach, but this was apparently very wrong. Have I ruined our pens? Just the squishy inkwell part? Is this why some of the cartridges seem to leak if I try to reuse the regular pilot cartridge with diamine or Orochizuku ink? All right, Lorinda, this happens, this, you're not the only one. And I've actually talked about this fairly recently, but still I want to talk about it again because it's important. Um, so basically, yeah, don't use rubbing alcohol to clean your pens. It's, it's not good, especially soaking it. That's probably what did you in. Um, some people will use rubbing alcohol and they'll say it's fine. Probably they just haven't used it very much or they've only used it to flush it. Essentially, the, here's the problem. The rubbing alcohol itself is not necessarily what's causing the damage to your pens. What's doing it is the acetone. So basically there is acetone, which is put into rubbing alcohol as essentially a poisonous additive so that people won't drink it, you know, because otherwise rubbing alcohol would be, you know, without the additives like the methyl ketones and the, uh, I think that, no, methyl ketone, I don't know. There's a crazy chemical name. Then the acetone is the other really bad one. Um, without those in there would be like grain alcohol, you know, uh, get you really drunk. But uh, yeah, you don't want that. So essentially when they did prohibition back in the whatever, early 1900s, when was it? That was nice. Yeah, it was at that time. Yeah, because in the 1920s and all that. Um, but uh, around that time, that's when they started to put those additives into rubbing alcohol because they wanted all alcohols to be banned. So they started putting that in there, but then prohibition ended. They still just kept putting that stuff into the rubbing alcohol. So it's still there today. Um, so that's what's causing problems. Acetone essentially melts plastic. So um, acrylic acetate is one type of, of resin. That's what, is, you know, like Edison pens and stuff are made out of acrylic acetate. Acetone is the solvent that dissolves ac <laughs> acrylic acetate. Um, so you literally, if you soak this pen, in uh, acid, if you soak it in pure acetone, it's going to melt completely very quickly. If you soak it in rubbing alcohol, it's going to melt eventually because there's not a, a lot of acetone in there, but it's enough that it's going to cause some problems over time. So that is uh, basically what's happened with your pen. Metropolitan here, um, it's mainly made of metal, but the grip and the feed are made of some form of plastic, um, which is, you know, basically some sort of acrylic. So yeah, essentially I think the acetone has uh, eaten away or melted part of your pen. So I'm not saying like that without seeing it or knowing anything more about it. I can't say like, that's the reason why your pen is leaking, but I can say pretty much like, yep, if that's what you've done, uh, that is immediately what I would point to as being a problem. There's nothing about using diamine or Orochizuku ink in a pilot cartridge that would, that would um, well, or a converter, that would be a problem. The one thing I could say is maybe if you haven't damaged your pen, uh, just if you've been using cartridges and you have the converter, make sure you have that converter pushed onto the back um, because it can, if you're not very familiar with the pens, it can take a little more pressure than you realize to kind of push it on there. You might be a little afraid, but don't be afraid, just push it in there. Um, if you've been using cartridges, you know you have to kind of give those a little bit of force. It's the same thing with the converter. So it could be that maybe you just have it kind of sitting on there and it's not seated tight enough. And especially if it's leaking out of the back here, that could be causing it. Um, so just make sure that your converter is pushed in there. If that's not it, or if you see any kind of visible wear or anything like that, it might be the acetone. Um, and you can actually pull the nib and feed out of this pen, like so, just kind of grab it with your fingers like, like that on the top and the bottom of the nib. And you can pull it out and see if there's any like weird, like smoky color or any melting or weird, you know, just general not healthiness going on with your feed um, because that is what would probably cause most of your issues would be the feed. So that's where we're at. Um, but in general, yeah, bleach, bleach is, is something you don't want to use like as a go-to, especially straight bleach. You want to dilute it pretty heavily. Um, bleach is not great for stainless steel. Um, it's okay if you just kind of flush it a little bit here and there, but you don't want to use it all the time and you definitely don't want to soak it. 
Um, ammonia, though, is actually the safest of all of these. Um, use a dilution. So take like a household ammonia into 10%, uh, a 10% solution into 90% water, and then use that to flush your pen. That's a very common kind of talked about thing that a lot of people use with vintage pens and other things like that. Um, very common like restorative type of thing that people use when ink is kind of dried out in the pen. That's also the basis um, for our Goulet pen flush as well. Um, it's an ammonia base. So that's um, you know pretty darn safe for most fountain pens, much safer than rubbing alcohol. So. Take that in mind and pass it along to your friends. We don't want anybody, anybody uh, doing anything to their pens that's gonna be bad, so 